He is in the black and red spandex. And uh, who would you give that round to, Shay? Uh, that's a, they both had their uh, their uh, advantages there in the first round. I, I would probably go with Brandon, honestly. Yeah, I think I would give Brandon the first round, too. And, uh, and I think that's the one thing. Matthew, hopefully he did not come into this fight underestimating Brandon at all because Brandon is I can sitting. imagine that's a, a huge head game. I mean, when you find out your opponent has one arm, I couldn't. And, but then you find out after the first round how functional he is with right. it. So, I mean, that's, again, as you said, inspirational to everyone out there and a warning to his future opponents, don't underestimate me. <laughs> Most definitely. Brandon coming in. He played rugby, football, track, and wrestling for seven years. He had two state records in rugby, which is unbelievable. Felt that he got ripped off in his loss. So this is where he's coming to avenge that loss. Matthew representing Team Conquer and Ben Cummings, his... He's the owner of that gym and trainer. He's training quite a few fighters on the card tonight. He's got to, Matthew's got to drop that punch straight. And Brandon just trying to let him go. And you can see it in his face, too. He's got to breathe, though. You can't just throw those bombs and not breathe. you got to make sure Very he gets aggressive. Some which could be overwhelming, too, when they're coming from all different directions. It's really hard to, you If know, you can weather the storm, though, and we'll see how his stamina is now. It looks like they're both going to try to take a couple seconds and get their win back here. And that's why it's so important when you're making moves in these sports is you've got to breathe. You've got to work on the bag and, and, you know, it's sparring and make sure you're doing that. That's the biggest key to a fight. You've got to keep your breathing. You can beat yourself just as easily as someone else can. The crowd not too happy. I mean, it's hard to impress an MMA crowd, you know what I mean? Any stalemate, they don't understand how long three minutes is sometimes. <laughs> you can't go every second. People don't understand that, but you just can't do it. Yeah. The Energizer Bunny, maybe. <laughs> the Duracell battery, but other than that. All right. We're Matt Brandon Snyder looking for the takedown. Really defending that is Matthew. It's like Brandon's got a hook on the back. Oh, he escaped it there. Looking to isolate the back leg there. Yeah. On the takedown. We're going to see if uh, Matthew can just kind of instigate a stalemate here. Just hold him in position. And this is where it's not going to take long for Justin to stand him up if they don't do something. Brandon jumps over, looking for the mount. Yeah, you know what, and Matthew doing a good job of not letting him get there. This is where Brandon's got to get to work because Matthew's still looking a little fatigued that he's not able to do too much. He does have Brandon's right arm isolated, making sure that can't do any damage, but his other arm is just letting it fly. <laughs> I know you keep shaking your head. You're so amazed. I, it's amazing to me. I, I can't believe the fact that he has one arm and the non- the, the half arm, it, it's functional. It's amazing to me. You know, let's see if he can get, Brandon can get both his hooks in and loop around, staying on the back. And you're hearing his corner yell to him, keep that moving, get your arm up and pull it out. So you can, he's close though. He's close to getting it free. There he is. It's a good reverse, but a good adjustment. I'm Brandon and we're gonna see if Matthew can get himself. He's looking to jump over there the guard, he there he goes. Trying to establish some hooks now. There, he got him. Well, he's got Brandon's shoulders close to the end, but you know ten what? Ten seconds. For sure, Brandon banked that round. So, <laughs> you know, this last ten seconds is not going to help Matthew too much unless he's able to stop the fight. That'll do it for the second round. I'd, I'd say Brandon took both of the first two rounds, wouldn't you? Yeah. And you have to think that Brandon's coming in pretty good shape because if you usually fight at 170 and you're coming in and you feel good at 155, you know you did a lot of road work to get there. All right, so you have a two round, so uh, Matthew's got to go for broke. Again, Matthew in the black trunks, Brandon in the black and red spandex, and Brandon a little bit taller, standing at six feet tall. And he's coming to say that last loss I had shouldn't have happened so and that's that's a scary thing when you're coming into a fighter who thinks they got ripped off you know they're coming in for war revenge is a, yeah. a really good motivator i would yeah. say yeah totally you know matthew is seriously has to go for broke in this round yeah I, I don't see any way for the judges to give him either of the first two rounds honestly 
And the funny thing is, look for Brandon coming out swinging. He's going to put his hands together and land some punches. And Matthew's got to be prepared for that. Matthew has a tendency to go straight back, and that's where you're going to get caught with a lot of these wild shots. I'm seeing a little bit of fatigue here from Brandon, I think. I think because he did so much work the last <laughs> round. <laughs> We're going to see if he could come out and let him fly. Here we go. All right, Justin Houghton gets the go-ahead, and we're going to see. Oh, oh misses he the kick. him with the right hook. He's just got to let him go. High volume. He's just got to keep letting him go. And Matthew's just going to try and get away from any damage he could do. <laughs> you know, eventually those are going to be very wearing. He's trying to get his head as far away from those punches <laughs> as possible. And unfortunately, Matthew not listening Elbows to his corner. And sometimes that's the most important thing you could do is be able to tune into your corner and take that advice. It's not always easy, but I mean, uh, if you can hear them, they're always there to help. Yeah, Brandon that, takes the back. He's somewhat, Matthew has his leg hooked, so he wasn't able to step over like he wanted to. And you see Brandon, Brent, he looks yeah, over to his corner for some advice You there. know, and that's so important. They're seeing stuff that you're not seeing in there as a fighter. Extra set of eyes never hurts. <laughs> An extra six Big sets shot. of eyes. Yeah, right. Usually you hear the crowd giving their advice, eh? Their two cents. You know, looking for different angles to find the head because Brand Matthew on the bottom doing a good job of avoiding some of that leather. You know, I'm, I was kind of looking at him going underneath for the uppercut. Nice escape to get back up to the feet. Sometimes you got to take a few to get out yep. of there. <laughs> Bringing the knee up, but he, you know, Matthew's got to do something here because he's, he's going to. Yeah, he's got to make something happen. But what a takedown! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Looking for a somewhat of a crucifix here. And Matthew once again just trying to avoid damage, but the punches just don't have that intensity and velocity to make Justin stop this fight. You know, he's isolated the one arm that, that Matthew can't do very much with. So we're just going to see. Because Brandon, all he's got to do is, you know, play if, if around Brandon for the If Brandon could just get a knee up on that far arm, there wouldn't be too much uh, he could do in defense. <laughs> Still landing some oh, shots with that far arm. Oh, he him off. Tries to, anyway. So we're going to see if he can keep hanging on. Brandon's already has this in the bank, so he He's can just... He's just got to just hang out, pretty right. much. It's Matthew that needs to have that sense of urgency. We might be close to the end here. Yeah, you just never know how much Justin's going to let go, but I don't think, know if he thinks that... Oh, he's tapping. He's, he's tapping, tapping out. He's tapping. Matthew so upset. Very. Any which way he tried to turn and reverse the position, Brandon was all over that. All right, so Brandon moves to three, one, and one, and that's with the revenge factor saying, I'm gonna take this. <laughs> Matthew moving to one and one, and uh, you know, his focus, Matthew's focus was boxing, but you, when you're in there with somebody who comes straight at you, you move straight back, that's where you're gonna get into trouble. Matthew's gotta work on his lateral movement. He's gotta move around the cage. Straight that's the back thing. is always when gonna you get focus, you in trouble. When you focus on one aspect, you all, you, it, Well, he's a high school wrestler too, but I just think that he just seemed overmatched when it came to the ground because Brandon, that's his specialty, being on the ground. Matthew Pe Pettiprin looking a little tired in there too. Understandably. <laughs> <laughs> I think the crowd liked that one. Now, you know, I'm just wondering if Brandon feels that this is the weight he should be fighting at, because, you know, clearly he looks good at 155. He dominated this ev almost every second of this fight, I would say. Yeah. He wants to thank Widow, Maker, Warren Nutrition, and Yellow Jacket. Those are his sponsors that are helping him do what he does in the cage. Coming at two minutes, 46 seconds. Of the third round, 
by a headlock submission. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon <laughs> That's inspiring. I don't care who you are. That's <laughs> you don't see that very often. Check them out. Find them on Facebook. Once again, FightMichigan.com. Don't forget to check out these beautiful vendors around here, too. Selling t-shirts, MMA Unlimited, title boxing, 50-50 raffle, walking around, Vivid Inc. out there. Screen LTV, MMA outside. Love by a pit bull is in the house. How about another fight, Lansing? Let me hear you! I got a feeling you can do better. Come on, Lansing, how about another fight? <laughs> Introducing first, our red corner fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, David Ratliff. All right, David coming in and a uh, little hesitation on the music. You can't you can't step forward, right, Shay? Until your music gets bumped. You gotta have the music going. It's gotta. <laughs> that's how you get in your zone, right there. The music's gotta be playing. Everything falls into place. <laughs> There's really to, no feeling like it, honestly. The funniest like, thing when I used to play volleyball for the university before I started boxing, um, we used to for our opponents, we would put music when they came into our house, like Puff the Magic Dragon. Like they would give us <laughs> music that they love to like warm up to, and we would switch it for things like Puff the Magic Dragon. And I always thought about that when I fought. I used to think, oh, I'm going to try and switch out the, the CD of my <laughs> opponent. When she comes out, she'll be so angry. They'll be singing. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the first mind game you can play. All right, moving right along in our fights tonight. And uh, we have some more big boys entering the cage tonight. How much does it intimidate you when you see your opponent is tall, slender, and ripped, or if they're kind of round like a circle? Is, uh, does it matter to you? It, it does. I mean, I, <laughs> when you see that guy over there, he, he's got that look. You know, he's coming for your head in the heavyweight class usually. It's uh, it's intimidating, no matter what they look like. It's Well, yeah, when, especially when you know the big boys can just drop leather. Yes. It can be kind of scary. I like to think that I have the same effect on them, but I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, all right. So we are looking at David Radcliffe. He is in there right now. He has two fights. Two losses, so he is ready. He's from Malice MMA, and he is the slave the muscle. Slave muscle, I like <laughs> that. That's that's unique. I like you that. You like all the creative ones, <laughs> definitely. And um, he's from Ohio as well. So Ohio showing up tonight in Michigan. We've already had one Ohio fighter in the cage getting the W tonight, taking it from a Michigan fighter. And um, David, who's in the cage right now, has a wrestling background. Richard making his way. See, they're both uh, fighters searching for their first win. So let's expect to see high intensity because if I'm coming looking for a W, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Absolutely. I'm not going to pull a Mike Tyson bite your ear kind of thing, but <laughs> I'm going to do what it takes, and I may have to bring that high intensity. And whoever does, can dig deep to that next level. Desire and desperation, they can get you a lot. They really can. All right, Richard coming in, Kihas coming in, 33 years old, so a little older than a lot of the fighters you see coming into the cage. But when you stay in shape, no yeah. worries. Yeah, I like to see that. It's never too late to get in there. Representing Freedom Martial Arts, his style is boxing and jiu-jitsu. So he's making his way in, and he says he's been training at Freedom Martial Arts uh, for a year, going to West Shore Community College. And he's looking for a business degree. Four kids. Well, that'll keep you in shape. <laughs> yeah, Caitlin, no Skylar, Gabrielle, and Alex. So, uh, oh, and he, he puts out that he's very single. So, very uh, single. ladies, <laughs> little match.com right here. <laughs> Maybe he'll come away with a W in the cage and a lady on his arm on the way out. There you go. Introducing first, standing to my left, fighting out of the ring. 